Um, as you know, I'm a Darian Williams. I uh, am a native of Simsboro, Louisiana, which is about 10 minutes from Grambling. Um, I grew up, uh, it's a small town, a uh, small town where you um, are limited to things that you can do um, as far as social activities and, you know, different things like that. You know, I was always, um, you know, here. You know, my grandfather worked here on campus uh, for 20 plus years in facilities. Um, and my grandmother uh, worked um, right where West Campus is now. Um, she worked at that facility for a very long time. And so I always found myself being, you know, in and out of campus a lot. Um, so I gained that, you know, the feel of Grambling and I gained that confidence of being Grand fan. Growing up as a child in a single parent household uh, where I didn't have my father, I grew up in an environment where I felt kind of secluded and I felt that I wouldn't amount to anything um, because of the fact that I didn't have my dad in my life. Um, because as an African American male, you know, the father is, you know, to play that significant role in shaping and molding, you know, um, his son to you know, go out and do better things and to be a great father when that time comes and everything. So, you know, with not having that, I felt that I was missing, you know, a hole. Like there was a hole, you know, inside of me that I felt needed to be filled. I guess the situation kind of prepared me um, because growing up as a child, no father figure, it helped me to look for positivity in all things. Um, so once I did get to meet him, um, we formed a relationship and um, there was one thing that stood out to me that he said, and he said, you know, I see that you're looking at, you know, the fact that you didn't have your father and everything like that, but have you ever thought about the positive side that you may have ended up like I did? And I kind of took that in a different way when he said it, but what he meant was that I could have been, you know, the guy that kind of just uh, ne neglected things and, you know, didn't want to be a part of something or, you know, different things like that. So I see it as, you know, a learning uh, experience and I see it as something that, you know, I'm working at daily and forming that, you know, relationship with my dad. I started uh, becoming involved in leadership in middle school. I was president. Uh, class president, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, and then all through high school, I was president as well. And, um, you know, I hadn't thought about this until now. I served two terms as SGA president in high school, my junior year and my senior year. And now, you know, I'm serving two terms on the collegiate level. And wow, <laughs> I just thought of that, you know, now. Dr. Punton uh, told me the other day, he said, you know, it's been 15 years since an SGA president has served two terms at Grandma. And he said, but I think this is the first time that an SGA president has served two years and ran unopposed for each one of the terms. And I said, wow. So that's all to say, you know, to the students, to the alumni, the faculty, the staff, the administration, you know, there's a time where you're going to be doing so many different things and not realizing this, but you are a part of history, you are making history, and uh, with that being said, I just want to encourage all of our supporters, our alumni, to give back, you know, I've been a student here and I think of giving back now because I've given back already. Um, my after I like a couple weeks after I um, became SGA president the first time, there was a scholarship that I had went ahead and put out um, for you know supporters of Grambling to go ahead and uh, give back, you know, give to our students and um, had raised uh, twenty five hundred. Um, over Facebook, and then there was a company um, out of Mississippi that reached out and matched that. So that was $5,000 right there. As members of SGA, you know, that's one of the things that we play a part in. 
you play a part in, you know, encouraging others to give back. And, uh, you know, at some point in time in our police career, we will begin to give back, whether it's financially, whether it's with our talents, whether it's in the classroom, whether it's just with the things that we do in the community. Um, so I'm grateful for it and I do encourage, actually, um, I dare you all to uh, give back to grandma.